Get your live music fix with the best of Pearl Jam tribute music. Washed in Black will be performing for one night only, 7 p.m. on August 27th at the Federal Way Performing Arts Center. Experience a tribute to one of the most prolific bands of our time with Seattle's own Washed in Black as they celebrate the 30-year anniversary of the release of 10. Get tickets at fwpaec.org. Thank you to our sponsor, Becker Retirement Group. The best defense is a good offense. So before the sewer backs up into your home and wreaks havoc, stop freaking and call Beacon. Beacon Plumbing, Heating, and Mechanical is there for you when you need them most. 1-800-FREAKIN or beaconplumbing.net. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, the podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Stephen Throw Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed, and today we toast the Ballistic Beer Company out of Australia. Uh, Mike Hawk said this story my way earlier, and look, we've been talking a lot of beer on the show as we uh, hopefully prepare to start creating another beer to go with the Benjamin Red. I believe we're going to lean Pilsner. Well, guess what? Ballistic Beer Company in Australia, they make all kinds of different beers. They have about nine different brews right now, including their Twang Brambleberry Sour. I will be honest, I am not a fan of sour beers. They're not the worst thing, but just I have a hard time drinking them. But apparently this Twang Brambleberry Sour is selling quite well. And right now, the sour is available in 12-ounce cans or on draft. Well, it was available. Unfortunately, Ballistic Beer Company's Twang Brambleberry Sour, both the cans and the kegs, they've been recalled. And this has been like an instant recall. And the reason for the recall, a lot of people thought at first, was just the publicity stuff. They didn't even believe these guys. And they said, seriously, man, like, do not buy this product. Take it off the shelves. We'll, we'll credit the money back. But it's not a publicity stuff. You see, the sour beer is being recalled because the cans and kegs from Ballistic have been exploding. Something went wrong with the fermentation process, and now the cans of ballistic are potentially ballistic. So when ballistic says, hey, seriously, we need to recall these because these things might explode, people are like, that is great marketing. It sounds like like shotgun blasts going off. Right, and they're like, dude, we're we're not kidding. Mm -hmm. And so far, so some of the cans are blowing up. They said something happened with the fermentation. The good news is none of the kegs have exploded. They don't believe the kegs will would just to be on the safe side. If you tap be that to, keg. That is the point. So ballistic brewing has ballistic beer, and it is being recalled. Damn. But yeah, the fact that you have to explain this is not a publicity stunt. But let's drink to ballistic. We pour this booze, and we drink this booze, because we think it's yummy. Yummy! yummy. So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down, down the hola, bitchola! The Men's Room presents... Profile This. And Stephen Thrill Hill, can you please tell everyone how Profile This is played? I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Brandon. Welcome to the Men's Room. Hi, how's it going? Hola! Doing quite well, Brandon. Thank you. Sir, do you understand how to play this here game? Um, honestly, I do not. You do not. And I just freaking explained it. I'm going to read you a story, all right? And as you listen right. to the story, just listen for any clues you feel might indicate what the answer will be at the end. The question I'm going to ask you at the end of the story is multiple choice. So the answer will be one of the four story, or one of the four choices for multiple choice. Now, understand... You have a choice of the kind of story that you get to pick here. One of them deals with the wonderful world of drugs, where I'll share a story with you, and based on the symptoms or their actions, you'll tell me what drug it is you think they're on. There's also the category of bite me. In other words, what did someone find in their food? I'll share a story. Somebody finds something that shouldn't be in their food. You try to guess what that was. Or interior decorating. Interior decorating is where you guess the foreign object that ended up inside of someone's body. All right, so you can have the wonderful world of drugs, bite me, or interior decorating. Which category would you like? 
Let's go with drugs. Drugs. Goes drugs. My man. Better not understand how the game is played, but you pull up my heartstrings here. Here is your story. We go to Linwood, Washington, in fact, where authorities in Washington State found about $19 million worth of drugs at a Linwood home where a couple was arrested over the weekend. The Snohomish Regional Drug Task Force investigators reportedly found, well, a whole bunch of drugs in this place, multiple drugs, plus $14,000 in cash and equipment that suggested the couple planned to distribute the drugs. Now, 38-year-old man and his girlfriend, who was not identified, they were arrested on Saturday by task force officers. They're both currently in jail. Now, the man was charged with drug manufacturing with intent to deliver and unlawful possession of a firearm. The woman was charged with drug manufacturing with intent to deliver and possession. Officers were tracking the couple for quite a while and followed them from their Linwood home to the Arlington Municipal Airport, just north of Everett, where they were arrested without incident just this past Saturday. Now, officers had already been approved for a search warrant for their home and vehicle where they reportedly discovered the drugs, cash, and two guns with ammunition. Now, in this case, my question for you is what drug did officers not find on the couple? Which drug did they not find in the couple's car or their home? Did they not find meth? Did they not find crack? Did they not find heroin? Or did they not find fentanyl? So meth, crack, heroin, or fentanyl, one of those was not part of their drug collection. Brandon, how long have you lived on the West Coast? Um, I've lived here all my life, really. I grew okay. up in Olympia. That's going to be very helpful, I think, on this one. <laughs> probably. Probably. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with... Uh, the second one, I don't think they found crack. Crack. You don't think they found crack? Right. Have you ever been anywhere at a party I don't think they found ever where you've seen crack? Yeah. No. No, here. I have not. Oh no. <laughs> right. Okay, that's my point here. Right. I, I think this exactly. is. I think this is completely geographical. I have never heard of anyone who said, "Hey, man, you know anybody in the market for crack?" Or I got crack. <laughs> or I've been to a party like, "Hey, there's someone smoking crack." I've been to a party where people have had cocaine before. Sure. But crack is something that I would run into all the time on the East Coast. It was just always around. And it was strange to me that it just didn't have the... Meth seemed to be the thing when we moved out here, and it still is a bigger deal. It just never seemed like crack got over here. At least in Seattle. Maybe oh, no. some Los crack Angeles. is all over the place here. Right. It's just not something you find at parties. Yeah, okay. All right. right. I mean, That could it, be true. I would say it's all yeah. around us right now based on our proximity. But you're right. It's not okay. something people break all out right. of party. Fair enough. Uh, but, uh, Brandon, I'm right there with you, man. I'm going to go. Uh, if you're going to go crack final answer, I, I'm in with you. <laughs> I mean, that also I, might I'm be the obvious choice. Answer. You know? Yeah. I, I'm on crack final answer. <laughs> all right. I wish your parents could hear you now. What drug, what drug did they not have on them when they were arrested? Meth, crack, heroin, or fentanyl? We'll let you know coming up next. That was a tease. Get your live music fix with the best of Pearl Jam tribute music. Washed in Black will be performing for one night only, 7 p.m. on August 27th at the Federal Way Performing Arts Center. Experience a tribute to one of the most prolific bands of our time with Seattle's own Washed in Black as they celebrate the 30-year anniversary of the release of 10. Get tickets at fwpaec.org. Thank you to our sponsor, Becker Retirement Group. Make contact. A collective psychosis is sweeping the nation. We're in the thick of the haze craze, and Elysian is introducing an altered state of IPA. Contact Haze is a tangled chemistry of mild haze, low bitterness, and an explosion of hop aroma. This hazy IPA bursts with notes of bright raspberry, currant, citrus, guava, and passion fruit. Available in six-pack cans in stores and in all Seattle Elysian locations. Make contact. Must be 21. Please enjoy responsibly. Back to the conversation. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. We go all the way to Linwood. I'm profiled this. Washington State authorities found a whole lot of drugs in a home in Linwood. A couple was arrested on Saturday. They had so many drugs. I can't. The street value of the stuff was unbelievable, too. I mean, it was. Uh, the street value was ridiculous. There's more to the story than that. But, yeah, the, the street value was insane. But they had a ton of drugs on them. The question in this case is, what drug did they not possess? So did they not have meth, crack, heroin, or fentanyl? And, Brandon, that is a question that we posed to you. Which drug did they not have? You instantly said crack. Miles, you agreed, saying Mm -hmm. geographically. It just seems like 
a lot less here. Then someone chimed in and said, Miles, you've never been to a party in Federal Way. I don't believe I have. You have not. Well, hell, if you go, crack time. Uh, but anyway, Brandon, as far as your answer goes, man, uh, I'll be honest with you. You okay. are correct. Oh. Brandon, you know you're drugs. Everybody's rocking it up. It's very good. Okay. Yeah, so just so you know, the drugs they found in this house, they found about 1,900 grams, about 70 ounces of fentanyl, which is enough, as they said, to kill 700,000 people, 30 ounces of heroin, and uh, half an ounce of meth. And you have to remember, when they get this fentanyl, they're making other things with it. Yeah. So that's why people are dying with some batches that are not mixed correctly mm-hmm. because that drug is so strong. So whatever they're cutting that with, sometimes that's that's the problem with that drug. Right. And it's not great on its own. No, it's not. Now, Brawl TV News All Time, it is time for TV Time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, I'm again. the men's room presents TV Time with Ted. Ah! All right. Your choice is today, uh, you know, we'll throw in Mr. Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. Do we say The Daily Show or Trevor Noah? Oh, it doesn't matter. Same thing. Mr. Noah. The Daily Noah. The guy with the boat. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, that was Noah. Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> Most notable for his boat, yes. James Fallon. Seth Myers. All right. Seth Word. Or Ted Smith. Is it Ted or is it Len? Oh, yeah. It's nice. These guys uh, all have teams of talented writers and help them come up with a monologue each and every night. It's up to you to determine, is this an actual late night joke and from whom, or could it be a The Ted Smith original? Correct. Correct. Uh, a new study found uh, that there's a uh, clue to Van Gogh's final hours was hiding in plain sight in one of his paintings. The problem was nobody could hear it. <laughs> Trevor Noah. I'm hoping it's you, but I'm going to go Seth Myers. That's a Ted Smith fan, oh, right, yeah. yeah. Nice work. Didn't even have to work in absinthe or anything. No. Please ask me about it. Which was I, part of the reason that he kind of, if I'm not mistaken, didn't he get a bad... a lot of the reason. Didn't he get yeah. a bad... Well, not a bad batch, but whatever that batch was back then, and he lost his mind. He ended up cutting off his ear in that episode. In that era, there was a drought in France. There was a wine shortage. There was a lot of things that were being sold as absinthe that basically were a lot of garbage and he bought so that's what got it banned throughout the world the irony of that is you know decades later that's why absinthe had such this massive reputation for ooh, yeah drink this and go crazy and it's like no no absinthe will not do that but you know when your uncle leroy made what i'm pretty sure is absinthe that's the stuff that gets Mm -hmm. you to the stuff in my tub (laughs) i took a bath in it and everything didn't sting a bit uh the commissioner of major league baseball is facing (laughs) <laughs> facing, facing criticism for allowing a game to be played between the Philadelphia Phillies and the Miami Marlins, despite known about four corona cases. Even worse, someone now has to find a swab for the Philadelphia Fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> Foul. Trevor Noah. Myers. Commissioner of Major League Baseball is facing criticism for allowing a game to be played between the Miami Marlins and the Philadelphia Phillies, despite having known about four cases of coronavirus. Even worse, now someone has to find a swab for the Philly fanatic. <laughs> you got some big, uh, got a big nose. Yeah, real long nose. Yeah. Just picture like a giant Q-tip. Come here, fanatic. We got to test you. Gritty tested positive. I don't know if you guys hang out. <laughs> Dr. Fauci's first pitch keeps making the news, and his baseball card sold for a record amount. I remember as a kid getting so excited to open a fresh pack of emurologist trading cards. <laughs> <laughs> Seth uh, Noah. Trevor Noah. God, I hope that's you, Ted. Trevor Noah. Jim Fallon. Dr. Fauci's first pitch continues to get a lot of attention. A baseball card featuring that lopsided throw smashed sales records for the Topps company. More than 51,000 cards were sold in the first 24 hours it was available. I remember as a kid getting so excited to open a fresh pack of immunologist trading cards. I got it out. Uh, police have now confirmed the infamous Umbrella Man from the uh, Minneapolis protest back in May was in fact a white supremacist who intentionally broke out windows of the AutoZone. When reached for comment, he said it was super fragile. <laughs> Can you do that one again just for my own sheer enjoyment? <laughs> and then we'll find out who it is. 
Police have now confirmed the infamous Umbrella Man from the Minnesota protest back in May was in fact a white supremacist who intentionally broke out the windows of an auto zone. When reached for comment, he said it was super fragile, capitalistic, <laughs> espialidocious. <laughs> Seth Meyers. Uh, Fallon. I wrote jokes I can't pronounce. <laughs> you wrote that? <laughs> yeah. Supercalifragilistic, expialidocious. It's, it's a callback to Umbrella. Oh, okay. Right. Which is a serious story, but I was very <laughs> proud, and now I'm like, cheering about this. Is that uh, Mary Poppins? Mary Poppins. Oh, I didn't know it was. Okay, that's, yeah, that is works. Is that Mary Poppins? You're damn right it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're damn right supercalifragilistic, expialidocious is Mary Poppins. Oh, you could say it. I can say it, dog. Supercalifragilistic, like expialidocious. I like how you switched out Minneapolis and Minnesota on the second run. Supercalifragilistic, <laughs> Minnesota. Oh. Well, I mean, hey. Same joke, same, right. same thing, same, same road. City to state, right? right? Yeah. Guaranteed we knew the song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know that song, though. Pass the name of it. Super Califragilistic. Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. Now I'm done. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's... I'm done. Mike, do you know more? Uh, Give it to us. Give it to us. I don't the whole know thing. the whole thing. I know the word precocious shows up. Ooh, you are. That's, that's the third line that goes into... Supercalifragilistic expialidocious. Then they go in there. I'm deli, I'm deli, I'm deli, I'm deli. If you could have seen Mike actually dance it out, that you gotta dance it out, otherwise you just look stupid. Went into the Russian thing. <laughs> yeah, you didn't look stupid at all. I did it today. Miles asked me a question about a basketball player, and I literally went. Stefan Marbury. I was gonna bring that up earlier. <laughs> look, it would never get you there. If he I could have done like, it and remembered it, I would have done it, too. Like, I don't know why I had to go behind the back, but I feel like Steph did. Ted is literally walking by. Miles asks a question, and as Ted searches the sprint, he does the basketball move, takes a shot, and instantly you remember. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, that's his trigger. I get it. Health officials in England have announced a cat tested positive for coronavirus. <laughs> its, owners became, uh, its owners became worried after it slept for 21 hours straight. That's an hour more than usual. <laughs> Seth Myers. Seth Myers. That is Seth Myers. Health officials in England announced that a cat has tested positive for the coronavirus. Its owners became worried after it slept for 21 hours straight. That's an hour more than usual. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of funny that like Fallon's back in the studio, right? But there's no audience. Yeah, but I think it's still better because the roots are there. You can right. He can interact you know. with the roots. But and it's funny. Like, I'm just saying it's weird. Like Seth Myers is still at home, though. Sure. Yep. I will say you miss the audience laughing, but I, it, at this point, it almost might be awkward to see them inter- like them interact. Why? Why? Because I haven't done it in so long. Or? Like right. Like I'm just used to seeing people on two screens. It is weird, right? You've gotten used to the point where it's like, right? You got a split screen. Right. Like, got the double bus. Scott Hansen should host every single late night show. He should. We go to the double box now. I think for some of the sports shows, that's a little tougher, especially just the arguing shows where you're yelling at each other. Because you got to, you know, like, it's tough on Zoom Mm. or whatever. To argue on Zoom, right. Whatever they're using, right. But when when people talk over each other, you can't really hear it. At least if me and you were in person, we can, at a certain point, one of us has to, but. We can just yell at each other. But if Scott Hansen really did have all the late night shows, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Samantha B., Trevor Noah, James Corden, all at once, right? Like, oh, we got to go to James Corden right now. An unbelievable joke. If I can get the producer to go to James Corden. (laughs) Of course, you'd watch it. Right, absolutely. Yeah. We go back to Conan, and he's got an interview with blah, you know? You know, I would actually watch Scott Hansen doing, like, the aggregates of all the late night shows. Probably Because he's used to it. Eight up there, maybe, at this point in time. We get you all the jokes from every monologue at the end of the broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and like he'd only pull, right? And he'd have two sessions, right? He'd have the twelve thirty-five window. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then the one thirty-five. Want to window. welcome you? Oh to, my God, Fallon just killed games. it. We gotta go straight to NBC. Look, I even called it the window because he always talks about the windows. I miss that guy. We all do, man. <laughs> well, he wouldn't be anywhere right now, anyway. So he wouldn't be. You're right, and maybe he'll be back. Hopefully, yeah. Let's hope so. Uh, baseball obviously still having some issues. Talked about this yesterday. The Marlins, they've been shut down till Sunday. Uh, yeah, basically, they took a poll. Some people think the season's not going to happen. I, I mean, at this point, they're doing it. They're going to get. They are. I think they'll go as long as they can. I, I think that'll right. just be how that works out. I have a question, though. Uh, like, we know for a fact if we come from a different country or we are going to sometimes in, in instances, not from Washington State, but it, some states you have to quarantine when you go into them. Sure. Correct. New York being one of them. And it's always two weeks. So whether yeah. you're out of the town or you're coming into some place, whatever, it's always two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Th- these tests were just given last week. 
So now they're given a week window. Mm -hmm. So that's one week. So wouldn't you still be in that COVID window at that point in time? You know what I'm saying? You like, would not, be, but they're millionaires. Okay. Well, yeah, and also like they're getting tested more. So like That's I'm true. with you. Yeah. I don't. It, they always say a two week quarantine, right? But then the NBA, like if you test positive, you have to sit out. What's it? Eight to twelve days, and okay. they test you in between. So I, right. I don't. I mean, there's a lot of things with this stuff. I'm not positive yeah, where me the, where the numbers come from or whatever. But I know like DC. I want to say the Nationals had to get like a special dispensation or something from the government there to have these other teams fly in oh, right, right. and not sit out. Okay, okay. Yeah, because obviously if you had to sit out every week, there's no way you could do it. Right. Uh, I saw somebody else the other day, maybe it was today on Twitter, kind of talking about maybe doing a bubble for the NFL. And they were, it was That's like. a lot of players, man. It's a lot of players and it's a lot of football stadiums. But somebody made a good point, like. Just pick a big city in Dallas. What? That's what I was going like to say. Texas, God, like, they can play at any high school. Yeah. yeah. Right. Honest to God. That's, I mean, that's I mean they seat like 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 people. And you're not going to put that many fans there anyway. Right now they're kicking around like fourteen to 20,000 fans per game if the NFL were to let players in, period. Or not players, fans in, period. And you're right. Like If you go to the Dallas area, every high school there can accommodate fourteen mm -hmm. to 20,000 fans. But there's got to be no tailgating rules. Things like that. You can't sit out there and congregate with other people and party and then walk Just in. Pretend you're in Dallas. Yeah. Cowboy Stadium, at, at the stadium itself, this wonderful construction, blah, 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 blah. Apparently, the experience kind of sucks. That's yeah. whatever. Like, you go there because you're a football fan and you want to see this ridiculous stadium, no question about that. But as far as <clears throat> what you can do just as a fan, the things you're used to doing, like even bringing a sign that says, I love, you know, Dak Prescott. Well, if you didn't buy that sign from the team store, you can't bring that sign in to hold it up. Just stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, HBO is developing their own vaccine. A TV show. Oh, oh. Jesus. I, was... I mean, if they're first, good. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're working on COVID-19 vaccine TV show. No word on a title. It's based on an uh, upcoming uh, book called The First Shot by a journalist named Brandon Burrell. Uh, the show's being produced by Adam McKay, who directed Anchorman, Talladega Nights, and Step Brothers. So it's a comedy. Well, it would he's seem done that more way, but... serious stuff, though, too, like Vice, The Big Short, and the HBO show Succession. Okay. okay. All, All right. right. Yeah, I'm he... with you. When I first read this, I was like, oh, it's going to be like a comedy. Like, okay, people need to laugh at everything. Sure. Or but, just something at this point. Yeah. But right. Like, I'm like, well, he's involved in this and that, so who knows? And, and that's one of those things, too. Sometimes with directors and stuff, like... You know them for what the most popular ones, but you forget they do like serious stuff too. But I guarantee mm -hmm. there's a bunch of people out there who you just informed them that he did Anchorman, Talladega Nights. Like, oh, he does comedy too. Maybe it's like yeah. a reality show where somebody's in there like seriously getting ready to go into surgery and they're just in entering the beginnings of like when the anesthesia and you meet your surgeon and he's Will Ferrell. Right. And you can <laughs> see that it's Will Ferrell and you know it's damn well Will Ferrell and he's not a surgeon. The next thing you know, we know you're nervous, but you're about to fall asleep. <laughs> Uh, uh, Deadline.com is reporting that Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune are set to uh, resume production soon. Uh, they're talking about the uh, studio this week and next. Obviously, you know some things are going to change. There won't be people there. Uh, Wheel of Fortune has redesigned to provide proper social distancing between contestants. Wheel of Fortune never seemed like they were that close to each other. No, they're you about, a, they're about a fourth of the wheel, right? Like yeah, you always had wheel. to leave room for Sajak to get in there, but it's not like Sajak right. was like sneaking in mm -hmm. real close. See if I should be that. Oh, like, and Vanna's never this close isn't, to anybody. Vanna ain't close to a damn no. person. Now, Vanna's going to do what Vanna does. I like it when Vanna now, you know, they, they call out a letter. She knows how the word is spelled. And she's like, wait, like, I'm going to guess S, right? But there's four of them. But they let it the one farthest away from her first. And clearly, that is not the path she wants to take. She wants to do that one last so she can stand on the other side of the big puzzle. And she will stand and wait. And I've just noticed it. She'll stand and wait, stand and wait. Mm -hmm. Finally, they light it up and she'll hit it. Because they'll move her all over the place, right? Because And I don't know if they mess with her. I would mess with her, but you'll watch. If someone is like four letters and it's some big-ass puzzle, they'll light up the one farthest away from her first, and she starts trucking over there. When she's halfway there, they'll like light up the one that was closer to her, so she has to make the splits. Do I stop and hit this one? I don't know. It's just fun to me to watch her hesitate and make a decision about how to do it. And all the prizes she's on pulling Wheel a squirrel. And all the prizes on Wheel of Fortune are unattainable. Like, you're going to fly to Europe. No, you're not. Oh, God. Well, yeah, these are all the old episodes. Exactly. That's why my daughter loves the show, right? And Have you been watching the sure. old Jeopardies, too? 
I watched, I didn't think I wanted to. I'm like, man, I don't want to watch. I got sucked in instantly. Yeah, it's weird to see, number one, how young Trebek is. Yeah. But also just some of the questions. It seemed easier, I thought. Because I'm like, man, I'm crushing this right now. And you realize they, they have made huge strides. But you got to keep in mind, when they first launched it, they didn't necessarily know how smart you were and contestants had signed up. It's a new game show. They just wanted to give it a shot. It's just trivia as far as they perceive it. And then as the show's gone on, you realize, like, this is for smart people. So yes. they started betting a little more about who they put on there. Even on Teen Jeopardy, I'm like, oh, man, I got this. To-. No, I, oh. I don't know that entire category. Uh, Jeopardy, they've uh, the stage has been tweaked a bit, a bit to allow more space between the contestants. Of course, contestants will be at a safe distance from Alex Trebek. Trebek, I mean, Jeopardy's That got- might be his request. Right. And Trebek has been pretty upfront about, like, if he can, he'd like to go back and host some soon sure so yeah. I, I see jeopardy like all right we got it he's the man right you right. want you want to bow to what mm-hmm. he wants right whereas wheel of fortune i feel like you could i mean unless you're a diehard wheeler what do you call a wheel of fortune like every night viewer say jack off yeah say jacker <laughs> yes, right because jeopardy you're jeff heads jeff you're, you're, je- you're a jack you're a jack <laughs> i don't know i would call it jeff purdy mouth yeah there's got to be a like wheel uh, yeah Wheelers. Wheelers, wheel watchers. Fortune lovers. I mean, again, I'm a terrible speller, so I never really cared for the Wheel of Fortune. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, there's got to be a funny nickname they give them. Vanna White Power. Right. You know, like, you listen to 99.9, cast yeah, The Rock. You're a rockaholic. <laughs> right. Sure. Right? You know what I mean? Or you're like the dead. You're a deadhead. Mm-hmm. Or a Ted or head. parrot head. Ted head, parrot yeah. head. What do they call people that like fish? Uh, oh, God. You'd have to think you Hi. have a name. Hi. <laughs> yeah, stoners, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was around the room. I think it's Wooks. What? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Uh, but obviously, Trebek will be back boom, there. Boom. Uh, just the central crew. They'll uh, be wearing PPE uh, for everybody behind the scenes, and the staff contestants will be tested on a regular basis. So I think Alex should test them. Like you know, they go to that first commercial break to come back, and he asks you, you know, hey, what do you do for a living? I think he should like do the temperature there. Yeah. And Let's see if Sheila is going to stay with us through the rest of the episode. Through. It's not Shark Week, because that's Discovery. Right. It's Shark Fest. Shark yeah. Fest. It's shark Thank Fest, you. man. And trust me, they'll be showing a shark attack sub button. That what, is one all of the things people don't know about uh, Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune is, is they tape five on Saturday, they tape five on Sunday, then they're good for two weeks. Mm-hmm. And then they come back and do it again. So they're only there for a couple days. Thank you, Tim. We appreciate it. You are listening to The Men's Room. Make contact. A collective psychosis is sweeping the nation. We're in the thick of the haze craze, and Elysian is introducing an altered state of IPA. Contact Haze is a tangled chemistry of mild haze, low bitterness, and an explosion of hop aroma. This hazy IPA bursts with notes of bright raspberry, currant, citrus, guava, and passion fruit. Available in six-pack cans in stores and in all Seattle Elysian locations. Make contact. Be 21, please enjoy responsibly. The best defense is a good offense. So before the sewer backs up into your home and wreaks havoc, stop freaking and call Beacon. Beacon Plumbing, Heating, and Mechanical is there for you when you need them most. 1-800-FREAKIN or beaconplumbing.net. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go as we head to Connecticut where a man who did not want to pay rent, oh, he chops his landlord's head off with a sword. Meanwhile, the president of uh, Belarus, who said vodka could cure pandemic, ends up in the COVID-19 war. A school committee meeting on Zoom in Massachusetts is chock full of franks and beans. Three jail inmates uh, save a deputy after a heart attack and now enjoy bottomless supply of sardines. And the Dodgers are selling cutouts of fans, cats, and dogs. It's time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my car. Our top story. A couple in Massachusetts was arrested for doing, uh, rather, for their choice of attire while out walking their dog. Police got a call that after the pair was uh, spotted walking their dog while completely nude. Police stopped the couple and started asking some questions, which they answered, quote, incoherently. After being asked why they were naked, the pair became aggressive and ran from police. And after they were run down, they began to actually fight the officers, one of whom needed medical attention. They were eventually apprehended and charged. Hmm. Again, why do you want to be a cop? Because you have to deal with naked people. Right. And then wrestle them. Why are you asking if they're naked? You know the answer. They're crazy. (laughs) Right. Moving on, another news. Sticking with nudity and Massachusetts, a school board meeting needed to be postponed for uh, mature content. 
While in the middle of a Zoom call about the school's plan to reopen in September, the meeting's feed was overtaken <laughs> by a nude man, quote, performing a sexual act and using offensive language. Okay. After a short recess, the meeting was deemed adjourned and reconvened at a different time. <laughs> at least with chat roulette. At least with chat roulette, it was just coming into somebody else's video cam and their little right. stream. So you kind of had to be careful there. Zoom is now being targeted. These people are hunting around waiting for where can I dip into. And they always seem to find school board meetings. I don't know what kind of low security these school board meetings are on or, or these classes are on. The good news is, all right, so remember, and granted, well, I guess because kids aren't in school right now, but remember first when there was like penis on the Zoom cam, it was kids, like my kids, you know, they sit there in front of the Zoom thing and, and all their right. classmates are there. Now, luckily, no penis showed up during any of theirs, but remember, it was always, and it was never high school. It's like elementary school. Right. And then penis. At well, least now, it's just adults. So you can be offended, you can be what you want, but at least you're an adult. I was going to say, the other problem with the school was, my, my brother went through this as a principal. Oh, God, that's right. Is that when they first started it, some of the kids would just go on Reddit and be like, here's our meeting code. Right. Like, oh, get us. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Good point. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. Zoom can be hacked into. Right. They're finding their way in. They are finding those back channels. For sure. You know, the funny thing is, remember, Zoom was around before all of this hit. Yeah. Just no one used it. So it's Zoom business. was like, man, we've been fine, but not everyone uses it. Now we got penis problems. Exactly. Uh, we've heard of. Still- have you seen the joke that was like Skype had a head start and lost the Zoom? <laughs> no. It's true, though, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've heard about the seat fleet that's been implemented in the 2020 season of baseball in which people can submit a photo of themselves to be made into a cardboard cutout and put into the audience to watch the game. We go to L.A. where they're talking, uh, taking the next step and offering people the opportunity to submit a photo of their dogs for a crisp $149 to be made into a cutout and put into the stands to watch the Dodgers play. Well, they're behind the Mariners because the Mariners got a ton of dogs and cats out there. Yeah. That's because that's Seattle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, right. You don't even have to ask to get the pet picture here. There's more babies, dogs, and cats in the stands watching the Mariners. It's like dog night. Remember they had that every year? Mm-hmm. Oh, God, you bring that's your dog right, yeah. to the park, which is actually a pretty cool thing. I mean, viewers that couldn't actually, you know, watch the game and understand what was happening. Yep. Right. Dogs and babies. <laughs> What do they call that? Bark at the park? That's the one. That God, loved bark yes. at the park. What was the other one they had? About- Shark at the park, but that was bloody and ended poorly. Yeah, remember when people would come and stitch stuff? Stitch oh, pitch? Niche, oh, n- uh, stitching night. Or mi- yeah, right. Knitting God, night. What was it called? Was it just called knit night? Knitting night. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Who, who didn't want to go to a baseball game and knit? Uh, stitch and pitch. Stitch, stitch and, and pitch. Stitch, stitch and it? pitch. All right. We go into uh, down to Georgia. A local sheriff's office had three inmates to thank for the health of one of their deputies. While making a routine security check, the inmates noticed that the deputy didn't seem to look so good and watched as he lost consciousness and fell, splitting his head open on the concrete floor. The inmates began to bang on the doors and shout at the deputy, who heard the voices in a dreamlike state. Thinking that one of the inmates needed help, the deputy managed to make his way over to the panel and unlock the cell doors. The inmates then cared for the deputy as best they could until help arrived, and now he's at home recovering. Maybe I'm a cynic. I'm saying all three of those inmates are in for a misdemeanor. Yeah. Like, if I'm in jail for 15 years, I see you drop, I'm kicking your ass. I'm sorry, man. But yep. like, you are bitter. You are stuck there. It's a felony. If I'm in there for 18 months, like, you know, let's help a brother out, man. Man, this is right. a good story. They use this no, to, to show know. the sympathy between the inmate and and the guard. You know, these these guys were were genuinely concerned about this guy, and he was genuinely genuinely concerned about one of them, thinking that there was an emergency for one of them going on. While well, his head is cracked open to go and open the thing up, and they just come out there and they help him out. Or it's the other way where they go, like, "Hey, man, this is the guard doesn't care if you got a cell phone in your butt." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, he's been nice to everybody right. in there. You've been so, decent. Like, you know, like, it just depends on the individual person on both sides. You know what I mean? Like, sure. Like, is this person a D-bag or not? Right. And kind of, I think you just make the human judgment call there. Now, here's one of the thoughts that came to my mind, because help did show up. Who's the guy that has to look at these inmates that made a racket, got out of their out of their cells, and helped this guy, called, uh, you know, called emergency services to get him there? Who's the guy that now looks at these inmates and says, all right, guys, uh... Back in a cage. Yeah, well, like, no, yeah, but the, but yeah. The judge next time that they are up for parole has a different story to hear. You bet. He so, absolutely so does. In that you just but gotta, they've got to go back into the jail they cell until that time. They've got to go back in there, and then when that time comes, <laughs> hopefully there'll be some leniency based on their actions. Appreciate you know? that, but... But again, the leniency, I think, shows up, though, when you're already scheduled for that. So you can be like, yeah, 
You got nine years <laughs> mm-hmm. before you're going to learn about the leniency. <laughs> right. <laughs> A uh, terrifying story out of Connecticut. We're going to take a huge 180 here. A man in Hartford didn't take kindly to being told that he needed to pay rent. The man was renting a small apartment, and when he hadn't made his payment, he got a visit from the landlord. The pair got into an argument about the issue that boiled to the point that the renter actually grabbed a samurai sword and disposed of his landlord in a way that would make the Queen of Hearts proud. Wow. Jeez, <laughs> off with his head. Wow. The guy went to the cops the day before that and said, this guy's not right. I'm trying to get him out of there. He hasn't paid rent ever. Mm-hmm. And they went, okay, well, whatever. And then they tried to get a hold of him, and they, no one could get a hold of him. So then his family called the cops and said, hey, we we don't know where, we, we can't find him. So the cops went to this rental unit, and right. they found him decapitated. Jeez. Jeez. Good times. That is it for your headlines with that. Mike Hawk is out. We'll see you next time for the Head Chef Ted's Meat and Potatoes. Big Dummy on tap. The lovely Terry Daly joins us next. Yes, indeed. It is all true. But in the meantime, we be all up out this bitch. So until next time, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man! A double flush production. The COVID-19 pandemic showed us how a microscopic virus could upend our lives. There is so much out there that we need to understand. But for every threat, there are heroes working at the edges of science and policy to protect us. I'm Dr. Abdul El Sayed, former Detroit Health Director and host of Crooked Media's America Dissected. Every episode, I talk to the doctors, scientists, culture makers, and policy leaders who are working out new ways to protect us against our biggest threats. New episodes of America Dissected every Tuesday. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.